This week on Pole House Black Pop Weekend Getaways, we are in Kansas City at the National Trails Museum, where we see our first sign of the ruts. Uh, maybe? And we fix a Leslie favorite, chocolate chip cookies. So stick around! Think they're done, hun? What we meant to say was Well, we have arrived at the National Frontier Trails Museum in Independence. Uh -huh. And uh what is the significance of this, Angel? Well, as the train got railroad tracks got closer the starting off point got further away from Franklin mm -hmm. so yeah we got to start off Franklin and Arrow Rock <laughs> then Lexington <laughs> and then here and then here to Independence the and yeah. see that rail, the train tracks <laughs> is what stopped the whole Santa Fe track yeah because we didn't need it at all because the, the biggest majority of the Santa Fe trail when it started in 1821 was a lot just to haul cargo. Yes, merchandise. Uh, and merchandise. And it's, it's, it's very much as much as it did for just people and, and people heading west. So, okay, we're going to go inside and check it out. This is just one of many of the mother of the trails. Here is Blazing the Way West, Lewis and Clark Expedition in 1804 to 1806. It was shortly after President Thomas Jefferson worked at a deal with Spain to purchase all this land basically west of the Mississippi and called the Louisiana Purchase for only 13 cents per acre. This is a cute little scale model of a covered wagon. I don't know how small it is, but you can see it's quite a bit smaller than I am, so it's pretty neat. And here's it on the front side. They had lots of stuff, Dutch ovens, a butter churn, uh, bags of probably flour and sugar and things like that, their bed roll, even some kettles, Dutch ovens, water jugs, lanterns, all kinds of cool stuff. It's pretty neat. It's amazing how the discovery of beaver and other fur-bearing animals by Lewis and Clark during their expedition showed that there was very much potential of trappers that actually came out heading west uh, to sell, trapping to sell furs and send them back east. So this made this area that they explored even out toward Santa Fe Trail uh, started getting very popular even well before the 1821 beginning of the Santa Fe Trail.
as the Santa Fe Trail got more and more popular and busy for people heading west and trading of furs and merchandise, it was here in Independence was one place where they had a lot of busy place of general stores for people to stock up before they headed out further west. And also including uh, very popular and needed was blacksmith shops where they had supplies to horseshoes and things and uh, work on now uh, wagons that they could uh, repair and get in, of course, good working order before they headed further west because this is uh, one very busy spot come spring because as they wanted to head west, it was a two month wagon ride to Santa Fe on the trail. And then later on, uh, when the Oregon Trail became popular after the 1840s, it uh, was a 2000 mile trail, which took over five months. So you had to get started early in the spring or you could take the threat of getting caught in the mountains before you make it to Oregon which of course happened to a famous uh, party that was tragic called the Donner Party, so. This is a sample of the Santa Fe Plaza in 1846. Of course, with the very popular of the day, Conestoga Wagon, which is the largest of the two main wagons, kind of the semi of the day back in the 1800s. These wagons would hold a good 12 tons of merchandise. Now, this wagon, as opposed to the Conestoga wagon, was a fair amount smaller. I think it would only hold about two to 3,000 pounds of cargo. And this would have been the standard wagon of the day for most farmers and ranchers, kind of like the modern day pickup truck. Kind of interesting, here's some samples of trail trash, as they call it. Large object, object, even like grandfather clocks and chairs and- People dumping their stuff. People dumped the stuff as they left home. Out east, they figured they had to have these family heirlooms with them. But unfortunately, they were heavy. And as they further they went, harder it was to get themselves all the way to the end of the trail. Not as bad on the Santa Fe, but really more importantly on the Oregon Trail, later the California Trail. They just had to dump lots of, of these things off the side of the trail because they were trying to make it themselves out west and couldn't take all the stuff that they wanted. They had to have their other provisions like their blankets and their food and things like that just to survive to make it. Okay. Iris is upset. Yes. This is pretty neat. This is uh, basically where the, the waiting room was, where the uh -huh. people were the passengers would get ready to get on. Okay. And uh, this is where they moved it in 1996, what it looked like. They only moved it just a few hundred yards. That was back when it was still being used in 1953. <clears throat> and then the depot master, his basically his office was right in here. And uh, you have a really neat guided tour here, if you want to take it. It was one of the neat things that she told me was this is a sample of the different color lights being the green, yellow, and the red, 
Yeah. Which the train we, yeah, yeah, that is now where the stoplights that we have all across the world came from the train yeah. industry. Oh, really? I didn't and know that. And then the Blue Lantern was that there was a uh, train issue problem, and then they had to be addressed when it came in. <clears throat> and this is one of the few uh, in the States that was two-story depot. Okay. And the uh, upstairs was where the depot master lived. And it's, uh, we took a tour, you get a tour of that also. Very nicely uh, stocked house for him and his family. They got some neat little train model sets. It's pretty cool. You have one like this at your mom's, don't you? Mm-hmm. A lot of, if you, uh, if they transported chickens, it would have been in a crate like this. And even when they hauled eggs, eggs would have been in a wooden box like that. <clears throat> yeah, of course, trunks. They had these first, last on and first off for the trunks with the hump top, because you couldn't put anything on top of them. Whoa. And some of the tools that they used to work on the railroads from, uh, Railroad jacks and What's upstairs? different uh, things. This actually here, this these here is what they actually used. That they actually put down under the wheels, so by one person by hand could actually start rolling a rail car. What's upstairs? Upstairs is the living quarters. Well, I just got back. I gave you a little video of the wagon ruts in multiple different paths also called swales and this was kind of right down here in independence in the original part of town where they would come into town as they got ready to hit their western route uh which is split off either from the oregon or the santa fe trail and um, i was going to do something out there but the winds come up didn't figure it'd be very good audio but it was real neat this is only like two blocks away from the museum complex that we just left where we had the trails museum and then right next door to it was the original independence depot and it was kind of a neat complex because it talked about the original uh ra uh, trails part of history from the starting about the 1820s of course with the santa fe trail and on up through changing of history as the trails died and rails took over on the railroad when the depot was built, I think in 1879, and then by the 1880s, pretty much as train tracks went all the way from here to Santa Fe, that pretty much killed uh, the Santa Fe Trail. And so, the Pioneer Express, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, Pioneer Express, I think was, I don't remember exactly when the Pioneer Express. It only lasted about four years. Yeah, before things, Telegraph and, and other mail sources went a lot faster, so. Okay, that takes care of this part of uh, two here. Next stop will be camp at Western Bend State Park. We'll see you there. Well, darn it. Well, we got here. We and got set up for we the most part. We got here and we heard this noise. And Leslie says, "Is up thunder?" And I said, eh, "I don't think so," because what fooled us? They were calling for back in Fayette, which is in the middle of the state. They were calling for afternoon thunderstorms and kind of developing in in the eastern part of the state. So and maybe, it's cold here. Yeah, it's it like off. thirty degrees difference. You know, yeah, yeah. Between home and here. So we figured that the cold front had already gone through and probably therefore hopefully the thunderstorms. But well oh, and we that means it's wet enough out here yeah. now that we're not gonna be able to bake very easily. We could. If we absolutely if had to. we had to, but we don't. So what we were planning on baking tonight, we will bake on our front porch. So mm, we'll still clue it on this video. Yeah, we'll, we'll just still be a different time zone. Here. We were gonna <laughs> fix chocolate chip cookies. So that's where we're going to leave you. We are going to show you where we're going to eat because it's a fairly well-known restaurant. Yeah, we're going to go there and, and next and get, because we're in the Kansas City area. We're like actually going down to Kansas City. 
uh, because it's Saturday night, they'll probably be busy, and there's tons of places, but a neat one we saw close by northeast of Kansas City, just a little few miles, is called the Wabash. So we'll meet you there. What's the water puddle, hon? I am. Okay, we have come to Excelsior Springs to the, what used to be the Wabash Train Depot. Now it is Wabash Barbecue. And I'm not for sure, not but sure. I think, I know it was on a Food Network feature, and I think it was Burgers, Brew, and Q, but well, if it's wrong, we'll have to let you know. Okay, Angel and I are going to get the piggy bat combo. All four of their sliced smoked meats, plus their award-winning ribs and two signals and switches. And since they fry their shrimp with the other, we can't have fried stuff for Angel because she's allergic. We're going to have coleslaw and barbecue beans. And that, Leslie, what are you going to get? I'm going to get the fireman's favorite, and I'm going to get french fries with mine. Fireman's favorite. Half pound. Tender brisket chunk. Well, hello. This is our future self. That's right. Uh, let's see here. What were we doing? We were actually at the Frontier Museum, weren't we? Yeah. And we had just got back to camp, and guess what happened? Mother Nature hit, yep. didn't she? Yeah, it was so, late in the afternoon, and it was raining, and thunder, and the lightning, and... We chickened out. We, and we weren't quite <laughs> set up either. We were trying to get the canopy up and then it really started raining. Yeah. So we went out and ate. We didn't even eat there at the camp. So this is the demo for that. What we were going to cook is something Leslie really likes. Actually, I don't know many people that don't like this. Well, a few people that don't. Maybe. Well, yeah, if they don't like chocolate. We're making yeah. bar chocolate chip cookies. So we're going to get things worked around and we're going to show you how we make okay, it. Okay, we'll be right back. Well, I'm going to, it's just windy out here. My powdered ingredients I think are going to wind up flying away. So, in here I've got my flour, my salt, and my baking soda. In here I have three-fourths cup of brown sugar and three-fourths cup of white sugar. Now I'm just going to mix that together a little bit. And then I'm going to do what's called creaming my sugar and my butter together. Now, for those of you that are novices and don't know what creaming means, when you make whipped topping using whipped cream, heavy whipping cream, it will kind of look like this. That's why they call it creaming it. To that I'm adding two sticks of soften, which is very important. You don't want hard butter in this. Now, normally we'd be using a mixing bowl, but we're kind of, since we're on the, or mixing bowl, uh, mixer, hand mixer, but since we're going on the premise that we are on the Santa Fe Trail, they would have had a hand mixer that's human powered and it would be very hard and I am not coordinated enough to cream this together with that. It's one of them that you crank and had two beaters on it. If I can find it I'll show you what it looks like. Maybe I can find one on the internet. Anyhow, um, get this all mixed together. Okay, now that's pretty well creamed together. So to that I'm going to add two eggs. Thank you Brother Brian for the eggs even though you won't see this video. Whew. 
Okay, now. Wait. See how that kind of looks like heavy cream? And yes, it took the eggs to do that too. To that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. Real vanilla. This is not something you want to skimp on. It gives you the wang if you do. Get that all mixed up. Now, that's all the wet ingredients. Put my chocolate chips in there to keep my flour and stuff from rolling away. Now, I'm just going to add my flour. Not all of it. My flour, my baking soda, and my salt. And that's another one of those pre-mixes. If we were camping, we would Yes, we, we would have already it, had that yeah, done. Pretty handy. Although we didn't. No, we didn't that we time. Think, no, I don't know what we were thinking. Would have been a good idea. Yes, it would have been. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting tired of stirring. stuck in there. Well, whoo boy howdy. I do believe I about got that all mixed up. See that? Now, to this we're going to add 12 ounce, or, yeah, 12 ounces of chocolate chips. We don't know what we did with the chocolate chips we took with us. So, this is a partial bag. Oops. We're going to dump the whole thing in there. And it's mini chocolate chips. Semi-sweet, dark is even better. These are semi-sweet minis. Oops, there's still some in there. Would you believe it's warm enough out here they've already melted inside the bag? And they were in the freezer right before I brought them out. Now, all we've got to do is mix this up. Look I've been that. looking. I oh. think they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Now, you could just make regular cookies. Yeah, you could doll them on a cookie sheet. That's right. Yeah, it is the same recipe. The beauty of making cookies is, in a Dutch oven, you don't have to have a special recipe. Anyone that you use in the house that you make little rounds with, you can use as a bar cookie. It may take a little longer to cook it, but that's yeah. it. But they take a lot more room. Put them on a cookie sheet, which a lot of times you don't have to do multiple and more, batches you, outside. Yeah, and it takes a lot of briquettes and a steady fire to do that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. or steady heat source, yeah. more like it. So we're going to regroup, and we're going to get them in the Dutch oven, and Wade's going to start the fire. So, all right, we got everything ready. Now we just got to. Put it in the Dutch oven. Woo! I'd say that's a preheated Dutch oven. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That was Well, hot. that sun <laughs> on that block makes a I huge do difference, believe doesn't it? Spring yes, has it does. finally sprung. There's an iris hair. Oops. Well, that's all right. I got it out. All you do is you just take your cookie dough. Just dollop it in there. And we're using a 12 inch standard 
six quart Dutch oven, aren't we, dear? Yes, we are, and believe it or not, them chocolate chips have already started to melt. Well, that sun makes a big difference outside, doesn't it? Yes. This time of year, it's starting to do good. All right, I'll get that out here in a minute. In late April, actually, yes. when we're shooting this. Actually, Iris will be a year old to uh, Monday. Two days from now, yep. yep. May the 1st. And I don't know, we may show you what we did for her first birthday. Now you gotta kinda get it as flat as humanly possible. Now, I'm gonna do this. Again, gotta get all our good em off of there. Yeah, we don't wanna waste any. No, we're not like them other cooking shows now, are we? Now, there's still a little bit of good em in here, too. I like taking in dishes that don't need much cleaning. Alrighty. Now, I would normally pick up that Dutch oven lid. However, I'm going to let Wade do that here in a minute. Alrighty. <laughs> Actually, you do that and let's switch. Okay. He didn't have his gloves, folks. Yep, I got my gloves. All right. Now, how much time Oops, we got? There's a spot right there, residue. We don't want to get that on the lid. There we go. We got maybe, what, five minutes? Yep, five minutes. All right. Okay, we have 30 pieces of charcoal gray. That means they're ready to bake. Maybe a little bit of black on there, but that's okay. They're bit good, so they'll be fine. A few out here, because they're going to go underneath anyway. All right, now, standard bake, just like anything else. So we're going to do a normal 10 and 10 on the bottom, 20 on top. So. Go around here where we can... What we're doing? Let me stick around here. Now remember everybody, what's the key on doing Dutch oven baking all the charcoal around the outside edge on none the bottom? None of it in the none middle. None in the middle because we'll get a hot spot in the middle and we'll burn no matter how good we rotate our ovens. Well, and that's the thinnest part of the whole Dutch oven, isn't it? So, uh, probably. Yeah, I think you're right. It is. That's why you have to put more on yep. the top, because that lid's about... Where lid's thick and heat rises, of course. Well, so. yeah. And that lid especially is very thick. Isn't that a cowboy or a boy this scout? One is, no, this one that we're using here is not. Oh, okay. So... Even they spread out, nice ring around the outside and about four in the middle. Okay, should be probably 30 minute cook time, so we're gonna go 10 minutes, rotate, and keep going. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. time for the second rotate and just like always we do the Dutch oven a third of a turn one direction in the lid third of a turn in the opposite direction ten more minutes well it's been 30 minutes yeah and that's usually what it takes we'll rotate it just in case yeah if we need to cook some more, we're already here. Although, from done. the smell of things. If you can smell it, it's probably getting close to being done. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It's probably getting close to being done. And I got a good whiff of it a little bit ago. Looks, Ooh, that looks good. Looks done, I think. Oh, yeah. Come out clean. Ooh, good. I guess I better get a picture of it, hadn't I? <clears throat> Just done. All righty. 
So we're gonna have to let them cool. Oh yeah, a we're bit. gonna have to let them cool. Get them a off bit. the get them off the coals and pull them out of the Dutch oven so they start cooling and then we'll sample them here just a bit. Yeah. All right, we'll be back. Let you see how they look when they're done. Okay, we're gonna cut it, honey. Better come on in here. Leslie wouldn't come out and sample this. Looky yeah. there. Oh, you get so your good. chips in there. Yes. Mmm. Mmm. Still hot. Warm. Mmm. Mmm. Good, hon? Mmm. Mm. Yeah, outside is a bad thing. Crunchy, yes. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, I got a hot bite. Ooh. Mm. And no, Leslie, that's not how it cooks. Anyways, we hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. That's a like. Share us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow us for the next several videos because this is just the first one in a whole slew on the Santa Fe Trail. Yep. Yeah. So, we'll see you next week. Yep. Thanks, for, thanks watching. for watching. Bye.